this. Hey, Priscilla, we're two minutes behind. Can you call places, please? She's our stage manager. We've already done it. We're just waiting for you. Thanks. Oh, well. Welcome, hello. Hope you're ready. We're starting the show. We're gonna go someplace sometime soon, you will know. We're gonna take it from the top. Give it all that we got. We'll turn up the lights, turn them up bright, and light up the night. You're gonna see some dancing in the streets. Oh, yeah. You're gonna see some lovers feeling sweet. Over there, too. Oh. Could be some dancing Christmas trees making their big debut. Could be some feeling neighborly. Uh, maybe not those two. We're gonna show you a good time all around. We will. A little story that starts inside this town. We're gonna go and view it right. We're gonna show a beautiful sight. So turn up the lights, brilliant and bright, and light up the night. Now, our story takes place, oh, about 50 miles southwest of here as the crow flies, in Bethlehem, Virginia. What do you mean, you never heard of it? Well, it is a very small town. Thank you, Vanna. <laughs> uh, the year is 1965. Men were racing to the moon. The minimum wage was about a buck. Motown was on the move. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it was the era of Beatlemania. Buffon hairstyles. Ha-ha. Oh, crew cuts. Yeah, we got them too. How about go-go boots? Nero jackets. Oh, yeah. And the Watusi. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Actors, places, get on with the show. They want to know what's the story and where it will go. They want to explain what it's about. Tell them their names right. and bring them out. Bring them inside yeah. and turn up the lights. Right. And light up the night. Okay, okay. Now, I'm going to be introducing you to lots of folks as our story unfolds, but I want you to meet just a few before we get started like these Vepco guys. Oh, who do you call when the lights go out? Who do you call? Who else? Vepco! Vepco! One, two, three! Zip, zap, plug it in, turn the power on. Ow. We'll get your light from <laughs> dusk till dawn. Zip, zap, so dependable. So you can always call Vepco! Oh, yeah! Okay, moving right along, I want you to meet Walter Freeman. I guess you could say that Walter is uh, modern-minded and slightly liberal. Hey, man. Hey, How man. you doing? Good to see you. Oh, his wife, Lillian, and their children, Mark, Patty, Laura, and Stacy. On the opposite side of the stage, or on the opposite side from Walter, almost every issue you can imagine, here's Archie Wright. Conservative to the core. Say hello, Arch. Hello! Arch! <laughs> yeah, see? And, and his wife, Betty, and their children, Dennis, Judy, Debbie, and Eddie. Oh, and you might see some tourists around town, too. They come to Bethlehem for our nativity pageant. It's Christmas!
tell you're going to be a tremendous audience. Yeah. Oh, hey, and I can also see that Archie and Walter are one step ahead of us, gang. So, act one entrances, please. Let's go. Yeah, hey, Lindsay. You forgot your hat. Oh, thank you, darling. I mean, after all, what's a mailman without his hat? Hmm. Nothing for you today, Walter. Oh, I'll take no bills any day, Willie. Yeah, I, I get that, man. Ooh, hey, Archie, I got that package you've been waiting for. Oh, thanks, Willie. If you'll put it on the front porch, I'll get it when I come down. Sure, man. See you later. Okay. Do, 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 hey, Mark, do, 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 bring me out another box of those blue lights, will you? He's in the shower, Walter. Patty, can you bring me some on of the blue lights? On the phone. Stacy? I'll do it, Gilligan's Island gets off, Dad. Dad. Looks like you're having a little trouble with your help over there, big guy. Kids, I see you're working up a sweat over there, getting your Christmas decorations up. Feels more like April than December, oh, yeah. but I'm making pretty good progress here, though. Yeah, me too. I guess you noticed we're going with a tropical beach theme this year. Oh, oh yeah, that's interesting. You know, we're a little more traditional over here. I can see. You got that same old mangy manger scene. <laughs> There's a reason we call it Christmas. <laughs> right. You know, Archie, there are other kinds of people and other religions that celebrate around the holidays. Well, maybe, but it's really about the Christ child, you know. See, there you go again, preaching at me just like you've always done, trying to inflict your opinions on me. Yeah, well, maybe sometime you should listen. <laughs> I should listen. I should listen. I should listen like the time I should have listened when we lost the football championship. We lost the football championship? I don't think so. Oh, oh you don't, huh? <laughs> no. Well, let me see. Wasn't it you who called the wrong play? No, I didn't call the wrong play. You ran the wrong play. I called power sweep right. You ran to the left. You've been running to the left ever since. If you get any more open-minded, your brain is going to fall out. You know, I'm going to tell you what your problem is right now. You are jealous. Jealous? Yeah, jealous. Huh. And it all started back when I got accepted to Yale. Yale? Why would I want to go to school in a foreign state when I can go to a fine Virginia institution like Hampton, Sydney? Ha! A fine institution, all right, where they have to grow real grass on the football field so the homecoming queen will have a place to graze. Oh, no, you leave my wife out of this. Oh, yeah, and speaking of growing grass, your yard sure has gotten bare looking over there this year. You know, it's always got to be a competition with you, hasn't it? That boy of yours, just like you, running all over town, bragging how he's playing second chair trumpet. Well, you don't hear my son bragging. He's playing first chair. Because he's dating the band leader's daughter. You know, you want competition, you got it. Tradition or no tradition, by the time I'm done, this house is going to light up the town. Yeah, well, I was trying not to show you up as bad as last year, but now the gloves are off, buddy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Betty... I want to see you and the kids out here. Pon poo! Lillian, I'm convening a family meeting now! Bring, bring, bring the bells. Free extension cords. Yeah. All the Sears and Roebuck cells. Anything from war. Sears is better. Pass the candy canes on down. Pass the string of lights. <laughs> Stop! Wait, look, could be done. Oh no! 
here with peace on earth, go will to men. Hey, you're trespassing again. Stay away from him. With all the seas and born the bun, there's so much here for everyone. We've got the stuff to see it. Guys, it really looks great, but all this creative stuff aside, does anybody know what kind of amperage this stuff pulls? No, we don't care. Guys, the, this upgrade we've been working on, we've only gotten as far as the church. Starlight Court's not been done yet. I think we're going to be okay, Eugene. We haven't even filled up all the plugs yet. Okay. I hope it's all right. Betty, it's 6 o'clock. I have got to scoot. Oh, what? George's parents are coming for dinner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Effie and I have got a pot roast in the oven. What she means is, I have a pot roast in the oven, and she's hungry. <laughs> I'm, I'm Effie, hungry. Effie, do you smell something burning? No, burning. no, no. Burning. Run! Oh, I'll get the fire extinguisher again. Run! For heaven's sake, Alice, don't dawdle. What's the rush, Aggie? You'd think we had an audience with the Queen of England. Roxy Monroe is a busy lady, Velma. Besides, oh as chairwoman of this esteemed town council, it is incumbent upon me to ensure its punctuality. Hence, a meeting scheduled for 6 o'clock will begin at 6. Alice, have you received the load-in schedule from Light World? Roxy needs it to finalize the rehearsal I schedule. have it here somewhere. Here, here it is, the load-in schedule and the invoice, which I think you should take a good look at, Harold. Yes. According to the last treasurer's report, there's not enough money in the Christmas activities budget to cover this. And these came in yesterday, invoices from Costume World, Premier Dancewear, Sound Technologies, Avon, oh, I'm sorry, that's mine. And an $800 bill from the Richmond Times Dispatch for advertising. Well, publicity is key to the success of any new endeavor, Alice. And absolutely essential for a fledgling, even if splendid, theatrical production. Sorry I'm late, Aggie darling. Essential or not, Miss Roxy, the town council budget allows $1,000 for Christmas activities. And these invoices here... Harold, Harold, you worry too much. And this will put ugly little lines on that very handsome face of yours. <laughs> Harold and Alice aren't the only ones with concerned Roxy. <laughs> Tell her, Marvin. Well, Miss Roxy, there is an issue of parking. You know, last year, our activity pageant drew over 900 visitors, mm -hmm. while Mary and Joseph had to hike in from the high school. <laughs> you know, baby Jesus is 10 minutes late. I've That's arranged right. for a shuttle for a modest fee. And if things go as planned, the Marvin Lawson and Sons Construction Company may be building a nice big parking deck, maybe just behind the library there. Three story. Oh, I should say at least five. Look at five for that. Well, tree. there is something to be said about oh. progress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and something to be said for tradition, well, we Marvin. Oh, 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 good everyone. Good, good to her. see you. Miss Roxy, I got a special delivery for you. If you'll just uh, sign and date it oh, right really? there. Yeah. If you'll hold up a second, I'll bring your mother-in-law's <laughs> Avon order out. Great. Be right over. And there you go. Thanks. Thank you, dear. <gasps> oh, my goodness. This is what I've been waiting for. It's from none other.
better than the Roger B. DeMille. Well, I've heard of Cecil B. DeMille. Well, Cecil is legendary, of course, but his cousin Roger is a luminary talent in his own right, I assure you. We met in the fall of 39. There I was, barely 18 years old in the wings of Radio City Music Hall with a stomach full of butterflies when a tall, lanky stagehand lumbered over to me, pressed his handkerchief into my hand and whispered, Rockettes, don't sweat. You're going to be marvelous, darling. And he was right, of course. I was. From that day on, Roger and I were inseparable and destined for greatness. Roger, a born producer with that incredible eye for talent, and me tapping and high kicking my way up the ladder of stardom. We could almost see it. Our names in lights. Roger B. DeMille presents Roxy's Follies. What, what happened? happened? Broken ankle, maliciously plotted by a skinny blonde understudy, derailed my career. And then the war came, violently tearing Roger from my life. We wrote passionately, of course, and daily at first, but then the letters came less frequently. And soon there were no more letters. Was he injured, captured, killed? I never knew. Until two weeks ago last Saturday, I had just sat down to catch the Channel 6 news when I found myself gazing into eyes I could never forget. My Roger, the recently hired station manager. Well, after a series of conversations in which I played with unrelenting telephone operators for Roger's unlisted number, I, in desperation, sent a parcel care of the station, daring to hope for a reply. And here it is. My foxy, woxy, roxy. Oh, that's me. I was surprised to hear from you after all these years. The rehearsal footage was delightful. And I am convinced that your story, Christmas Nights, will be an intriguing addition to my Christmas celebration series. I will arrive in Bethlehem on December 18th to personally oversee the filming of a half-hour segment that will be scheduled for broadcast on Christmas Eve. My assistant will be in touch with details. On a personal note, on a personal note, I have enclosed something I hope will bring a smile to your beautiful face. Oh. Still your number one fan, Roger B. DeMille. This is great. This is it. This My is chance for a comeback. And our chance to put Bethlehem on the map. Hey, now that sounds like a real win-win. You're with me then. All right, walk while we talk. First, Agatha, we must overhaul this lighting system. I was smoked fabulous. I can't, there must be no expense spared. Are you None coming, at Velma? All. None at all. Oh, I think I'm going to gonna ride the bus on. I'm not worried about this whole bunch of diamonds. Oh, thanks, Betty. I will. Oh, my goodness. We can afford all of that. Pardon me if I'm butting in, Miss Velma, but <laughs> you don't seem to be too excited about Miss Roxy's news. I don't know, Willie. I'm excited, I guess. Hmm? Um, the TV crew coming here to film in Bethlehem? Yeah, that's exciting. Well, I guess the others think I'm just an old stick in the mud. No, they just know you like things the way they are. And were. Mm. I remember yeah. when the children were little. And that Saturday before every Christmas, I'd dress them in their Sunday best, yeah. and we'd be off to Richmond. Oh, yeah, <laughs> to go to Miller and Rhodes, right? Yeah. To see the real Santa. Oh, and to dine in the tea room. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then we'd drive home and pick up their dad, and we go over here to Starlight Court as a yeah. family mm. to the nativity and the carol sing. Yeah. And now that the girls are grown and have children of their own, <laughs> we do all that together. Isn't that a great tradition? Um, you know, a lot of people here in town do that. Mm. Mm. And this year, no nativity and no carol sing. <sighs> oh, it won't be the same. No, it's not going to be the same. 
And sometimes the man upstairs has a plan we can't see. And he wants us to be faithful old sticks in the mud and trust. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I see your bus is coming. And, you know, i got to go to Stella's. Got to have my nightly coffee. So I'll be bidding you good night. Good night, Willie. Thanks for the ear. Oh, any time, Velma. talk to me in stereo. Oh. And how was everything tonight, Effie? Well, it beats the tar out of burnt pot, Rose. But you know, it gave me a chance to go out and put on the go-go boots. And you look beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, would you look at that? That little thing's gonna bite himself. Oh, oh, he did. <laughs> and don't make yourself so scared. Well, speaking of scarce, we haven't seen Clarissa around here much lately. She's over at Twinkle Toes most nights to rehearse and her little heart out. Oh, <laughs> that daughter of mine has got a one-track mind. Oh, yeah. You know, Rox has got her in the showcase number for Starry Christmas Night. <laughs> you know, I think I heard that several times. Yes, it's so exciting. My granddaughter Lily is doing the jingle number. That's we better great. tap our way right on out that door, Lucy, if we're going to get home in time for Lawrence Welk. Don't want to miss those linen, sisters. Lucy. See you at church in the morning, bright and early. <laughs> Evening, Willie. Hey, Miss Pines. Hey, Miss Rudd. How you doing? Good to see you, Willie. Uh, it's great. good to see you, too. Hey, Buzz, I'll have that cup of coffee, please. Willie Wilson, I had about given up on you. Well, I uh, was down at Starlight Court making a special delivery letter to Miss Roxy Monroe. You've been peeping in her mail. No, I don't do that, <laughs> mostly. But, um, hey, I don't think she'd mind me passing it on, though. Um, while she was reading it out loud, I heard something you might be interested in. Yeah? yeah? Well, take a load off and tell me all about it. I will. Well, it seems this big-time New York producer friend of hers has moved down from, thank you, dear, from New York City. And he's working here at Richmond, oh. yep, at Channel 6 News. And she convinced him to put her show on TV. <laughs> oh, stop pulling no her kidding. leg, Willie. Yeah, this Starry Christmas Night's mess has made her hard enough to live with as it is. <laughs> Really, you guys, honest. He's bringing a crew down here on December 18th to film. My Clarissa! Clarissa on TV! <laughs> oh, hey, Ma. Sorry I'm late. Rehearsal around late, and I had to pick up a few things from Woolworths. Why are you chasing me? What? Here she is. My star. My twinkle, twinkle girl. What? I used to be beautiful, just like you once. Then Father Time got his hands on me. <laughs> but that's all right, <laughs> because this is the break that I have been waiting, I mean, that we have been waiting for. We're going to get you that red sequin costume. Red sequin. The one we saw in that expensive catalog. <laughs> she looks stunning and red. We'll get manicures and pedicures, and maybe some glitter in my hair, and some glitter in your hair. I've got to get me something to wear. And I don't mean J.C. Penney's either. I'm going to Montaldo's. Montaldo's? <laughs> the camera adds 20 pounds. How can I lose some weight fast? I'll just get me a new girdle. <laughs> Not that they're going to be seeing me or anything. Ma, 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 what are you talking about? The TV show, Clarissa. What TV show? You haven't talked to Miss Roxa, have you? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, she got held up. Willie just delivered a letter from a New York producer friend of hers. Mm -hmm. Starry Christmas night is going to be on TV! <laughs> You're kidding. It's all going to pay off. All the time and money I sacrificed. All the money I spent giving you them dance lessons. Let them see you pose. Beautiful. <laughs> and all the money I spent on them voice lessons. Let them hear you sing. That's enough. You got to save your voice. Mom, look, I know it's always been your, always been my dream to be a big star and everything, but I need to be honest with you. Clarissa, this is no time to be honest. Did we have this discussion just the other day? When I was taking you to your voice lessons, I said, Clarissa, you sing so beautiful. You are going to be a star. All my life, I have been waiting for, I mean, all my life, I've been waiting for you to be discovered. Look around you, Clarissa. Diana Ross, Judy Garland, Lena Horn. You can be one of them. You can be on the Ed Sullivan Show. Cause that's what you are. You are, it's gonna be great. You'll love it. You've got the stuff to take it to the big time. You've got the stuff, you got the stuff. Got in a row, you better look out. You better look out. Look out! Yeah, we've got a star that's gonna go shine. Go down, go down, go down. We're gonna watch it go by and be a star. Clarissa, diamonds, fur, 
furs, designer clothes, more money than you can imagine, millions of adoring fans, and all you've got to do is get out there, sing your songs, and flash that dazzling smile of yours. You got a smile so bright. Never gonna change the channel Well, you could have been anything that you wanted to And I can tell The way you do the things you do The way you do the things you do Oh, yeah Hey girl, that brass ring is right there. Uh, it's out there waiting for you, Clarissa, honey. All you gotta do is just reach out there and grab it. Of course she's gonna grab it, cause she's my girl, and she wouldn't wanna break her mama's heart. Eugene, you yeah. super need you and your crew over at Starlight Corp Pronto. There's a problem with that new circuit at the church. Hey, guys, we better go. Our electric personalities are required elsewhere. You know, Clarissa, businesses around here have been hurting lately. What with all these Kmart stores popping up everywhere? My sister's hours at the Five and Dime have gone on to barely nothing. <laughs> and Daddy's Bakery, it's been operating in the red for months. So if putting on Miss Roxy's show can bring some new folks into town this Christmas, well, that's got to be good for all of us, right? It's got to be good. Tell her that. Tell her that. And, and what oh, kind of you. show is Miss Roxy going to have without her star? Can't do it this without you. This is your you. big break, baby. We can't do it. we got to have you. Okay, right. okay, I'll do it. Ah! Yes! You, and because it's good for the town, but I want you to know that this is not about me. That's my girl. You don't get it. Now you just go on home, take yourself a nice, long, hot bubble bath, and get yourself some rest. Willie, hammer her jacket over there, will you, please? Her sweat over there. Sure. And because we got to get you looking your glamorous Hollywood bound best. <laughs> I'm heading your way, Miss Clarissa, so if you don't mind, I'll just walk you home. Thanks, Willie. That would be nice. See you at home, Ma. Loretta, this is Stella. I need you to clear your appointment book for the 18th. Me and Clarissa will be coming in for the works. That's right. Shampoo, cut, style, facial, manicure, and pedicure. <laughs> What you mean, what's the occasion? Girl, I know you done heard the news by now. <laughs> My baby gon' be a star! One, two, one, two. Oh, who do you call when the lights go out? Who do you call? Who else? Bab Cole! Bab Cole! One, two, three. Zip, zap, plug it in, turn the power on. We'll get your light from dusk till dawn. A zip zap, so, so dependable. dependable. So you can always call them. Call. Oh. 
Pastor, we had a call about the problem at the church. Yeah, so I was just headed over that way to check it out for myself. Joe said he was running the vacuum and everything just went out. Vacuum? Funny, though, the problem doesn't seem to be affecting anyone else around here. Oh, well, that's because this upgrade we're working on has put the church on a separate circuit. Well, I'm sure that's a good thing, except for when everybody else is on and the church is out. <laughs> that's very true, and that's why we're here. We're going to get that fixed right away. So if you'll just lead the way. I guess I'm about the only person in this town who isn't excited about this TV show, huh? No, actually, there's another person that's not exactly overjoyed. <laughs> you know, I know that Mama thinks she knows what's best for me, but being a big star was her dream. I have dreams of my own I yeah. want to follow. You want to follow your heart? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I don't want to disappoint her. Oh, I think you were right back there in the bowling alley when you told her that you wanted to be honest with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose. Do you believe we each have a destiny? I believe we have a destination and a purpose to live out along the way. You sound like Pastor Albright. Well, thank you very much for that <laughs> sweet compliment. And with that, I will bid you good night. It's been a long day. Oh, good night, Willie. Please tell Sally and Jesse hello for me. Will do. You know, I can't believe there's only eight days until Christmas. I know. And after Roxy's Follies is over tomorrow, mm -hmm. I have got to do some shopping. I haven't bought your mother a gift yet. You're kidding. No present. Wow, for Mom. Look at Mr. Freeman's new palm tree. My goodness, that's just been put out since last night. I think so. You'd think that there's a contest to see whose house can be the tackiest. <laughs> oh, I know it. Look at look this. Look here. This is brand new to her. Oh, look. Uh, you're out a little late tonight, aren't you, Eddie? No. I mean, yes. I'm just taking Rover some leftovers. Oh, leftovers. I mm -hmm. meant to say I just took Rover some leftovers mm -hmm. after our very late dinner because Dad had to work overtime. Oh, that's your story and you're sticking to it, hmm? 
Yeah. Well, you better get back inside before your mom comes out and finds you. Yes, sir. I'm going in right now. Okay. Those kids. Lights out, Laura. Oh, can I just finish this last chapter? Nancy Drew just found this secret passageway, and this house she's been investigating. Now, Laura. Okay. Stacy. Stacy. Shh. I'm here. I'm here. I thought Mom and Dad would never go to bed. I brought you a piece of my birthday cake. Vanilla with chocolate icing? Mm. I got that kind. Because I know it's your favorite. That was nice. Was the party fun? Not so much without you there. I saw Mrs. Anderson and Bambi going in. Come on, Stacy. Her mom and my mom are best friends. Okay, so Bambi's pretty. But can she pop a wheelie? No. Can she throw a spiral? No. When our dad took us fishing last summer, I had to bait her hook because she said the worms were too slimy. <laughs> and get this, she eats her fish sticks with a fork. Who would want a girlfriend like that? Who would want a girlfriend that can't even come to their birthday party? It's not always going to be this way. Are you kidding? Our dads, they're never going to get along. Maybe not. But I'm already almost a teenager. Before you know it, I'll be grown. You know, 16 and can drive a car. Then we can run away together. How are we going to do that with no money and no place to live? You don't have to worry about things like that, Stacy. Always take care of you. A good paper boy can get a job anywhere. Yeah, and I can stay home and do the cooking and the cleaning and the wash and stuff like that. Wait a minute. You're not going to grow up and get all girly girly on me, are you? Shh. What was that? Quick, hide! That's your grandpa. Wonder what he's up to. Especially out this late at night. Who's there? I think I should warn you, I've been trained in judo. It's okay, Hazel. It's me, it's Elmer. Elmer, stay right there. I'm coming out. For Pete's sake, Elmer, what on earth are you doing all the way over here? And you're in your pajamas. Don't you know you get arrested for that? Well, I, I saw you putting up garland today, and I thought maybe you could use some Ben Gay. Uh, that was mighty thoughtful of you, Elmer. But you could have woke the kids. And if Archie were to catch you over here, oh, my lands, the trouble that would cause. He's already threatening to put me in a home. <laughs> well, well, they're fast asleep by now. Can't we just sit and talk for a minute? Well, all right, just for a minute. You sure do look pretty tonight, even in your curlers. Oh, I must look absolutely frightful. Well, you did catch me off guard. Uh, no, I didn't bring you a card. <laughs> I got you some flowers, though. You did? Oh, I left them at home. Let me go get them. Oh, oh no, Elmer, Elmer, no, forget the flowers. It's just nice to have somebody to talk to. All I hear over here is, take him out of me, some other. Take him out of Musil, Nanny. Did you take him out of Musil, Hazel? It's all they can think about. Well, it gets old, that's all. Well, I can imagine. So, what did you do today? Well, I got up, ate a bowl of bran, took my Geritol, and while I was waiting for those to kick in, I was thinking <laughs> about us. What about us? I think that we should get married. Oh, they won't let us get married, Elmer. Well, now, I've been thinking about that, too, and I have come up with a plan. A plan? We'll tell them we have to get married. <laughs> what? We'll tell them that you've only got six months to live, and marrying me is your dying wish. Well, why can't you be the one who only has six months to live? Well, all right, then. I'll be the one with six months to live. What have I got? Maybe you didn't take your man and me so. <laughs> <laughs> Can you die from that? Oh, I'm sure you can. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> How about you and I meet up down to town hall tomorrow? Well, their minds are on other things. Well, Betty does send me to my room every day after lunch for a nap. I could sneak away then. Okay, then that's our plan. 
How about we seal it with the Christmas kiss? Oh, Elmer, you can make a girl blush. Looks like your grandpa's sweet on my nanny. Our dads won't be too happy about that either. No, when you're older, it doesn't matter so much. Because you can do what you want to anyway. If only we were older, we'd hop in the car, drive to the ocean, and watch you. Spend our days carelessly like nickels and dimes. Only the winter would give way to spring with the warm breeze it brings and the birds as they sing. Then you and I would take wings. With all Someday when, while we've got today. I'm glad that we're together now. At least we're together. It's better this way, though I may not be young. I like you this way. I'll be more than a If only I have you, I have you today. Mr. Bentley, did everything pass muster this time? Well, yes, Miss Monroe, it does appear that you've managed to cross all your T's and dot all your I's, so I am going to issue the permit. Oh. However, I do feel I must remind you again that these old circuits were just not designed to carry this kind of load. I appreciate your concern, Mr. Bentley. However, what I am in need of at the moment is a permit, not your opinion, as informed as it might be. Then here you are and I'm going to call it a day. Good night, Miss Monroe. Good night, Mr. Bentley. Well, Roxy girl, let's just hope you're on your game tomorrow. You're going to be marvelous, darling. Oh, Roger! Roger! Uh, I remembered you taller. And I remember you thinner. <laughs> but listen to us. How long has it been, anyway? Four years, 73 days, eight hours, approximately. I'm surprised you would even keep track. Well, I'd be willing to bet my surprise trumps your surprise, Mr. DeMille. Hmm. Quite frankly, I was shocked to see you alive and well on the television after dropping off the face of the earth. In letter after letter, I poured out my heart. 
Why didn't you answer? I wrote faithfully to you. It was you who didn't respond. In fact, it wasn't until Celestine, out of respect for her and my past relationship, was kind enough to write and shed a little light on your new love life that I realized I had no choice but to move on with my life. Celestine wrote to you. Celestine, the skinny, red-haired understudy. I can see it now. Intriguing plot, orchestrated by jilted love. Oh, but she was clever, all right. Every morning, I'd put my letter in my apartment mail slot for pickup, and every evening, I'd rush home to find the mail slot empty. I loathe understudies. Sounds like we were both victims this time. All the years of painful abandonment. All the wasted dreams. Perhaps they weren't wasted. What do you mean? Look at us! I am a dance teacher in a no-count town, and you, a station manager in a no-count city. Well, that's a few rungs further down the ladder than I hoped we'd be. But what's changed, really? I mean... You're a few pounds heavier. Yes. I'm a few hairs thinner. Yes. But you were a knockout thin, Roxy, and you still are. <sighs> and moves like you had, hmm, that's <sighs> something you don't forget. You had it then, Roxy, and you still got it. And I can see you haven't lost your eye for talent. <laughs> You can ask any fool if you take a priceless jewel and put it in a setting that's cheap. Would it be priceless still? Well, of course you know it will. So will you, I let the bottom of the heap. Take a beautiful rose, so delightful to the nose. In manure it would smell just as sweet. And so would you, old Sherry, still exude celebrity. No matter where you live or what you eat. Oh, Roger, darling, you really think so? Oh, Roxy, you got it. Oh, there's water, but you have got what makes the potatoes cook. Oh, Roger. You know that you got it. I can always spot it, no matter how deep I have to look. Darling, you're going to outshine the stars. That's my plan. <laughs> Come on, Joey. This is so exciting. Come on, you're girl. You're going too leader. slow. Come oh, on, girl. Everyone famous in place. Come Stella, on. Come Stella, on. Stella, come on. If you don't slow down, you're going to fall and break your Ooh. neck. Besides, those trotters are made for prancing, not running. Oh, I'm sorry, Joanne, but I wouldn't have to be running. So if that Clarissa didn't move like molasses in January. Oh, girl, I clad was like pulling our teeth to get that girl out of the house this evening. Oh, Stella, I'm sure it was, but <gasps> you just got to chalk that up to pre-show jitters. 
After all, after tonight's show, baby girl's life is going to change in a big time way. <laughs> Hey, hey, Ted, Ted! Uh, how's the ho-ho-ho business coming? I cannot believe Roxy talked me into doing this. <laughs> oh, you're going to be great. Yes. Let's go. Uh, honey, there's Evelyn. Uh, we're going to get some Did rain. you get your socks out of the dryer? Um, yeah, I think hey, I have everything. <sighs> okay, here's the lowdown. We're going to be running two cameras. Good seats. One out back to capture the audience perspective. You, Ben, you're going to get the focal points. I want you to zoom in close for the performers for their close-ups, pan out for the audience reaction. Got it? Okay. Timmy, I want you to oversee the local crew to make sure that all the transitions go smoothly. Hmm? Katie. Even though we're filming, I'm looking for that, that in-the-moment, live broadcast feel. Now, the town secretary was supposed to line up a handful of human interest interviews. Did she get you those details? Yes. Alice is very efficient. We met earlier this afternoon, and we're good to go. Very good. Now, Melinda, I want you to just generally eyeball all the performers to make sure we don't have any makeup faux pas. Any questions? Okay, we've got one minute to showtime. Now, Miss Snodgrass, I understand that you are going to kick off the evening with a few comments, correct? That is correct. Well, let's get you lined up here, right down here, and have the town council line up right behind you. Okay, that looks great. Katie, Ben, I believe we're ready. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing in Starlight Court, the town center of Bethlehem, Virginia, where the figurative curtain is about to go up on the town's first annual Christmas extravaganza, Star Christmas, Christmas Nights. Nights. With me is Ms. Agatha Snodgrass, chairwoman of the town council. Ms. Snodgrass, we at Channel 6 are very happy to be here with you this evening. And we're very happy to have you here, Katie. Now, a large-scale production such as Starry Christmas Nights is quite an undertaking for such a small town. Tell us, how did this all get started? Well, Star Starry Christmas Nights uh, is, the, is the brainchild of former Radio City Music Hall performer Roxy Monroe, who now owns and operates the Twinkle Toe School of Dance right here in Bethlehem. In years past, the town sponsored a live nativity pageant, but given the level of talent developing at the school, Miss Roxy felt we were ready to forge ahead into more challenging territory. Well, I'm sure this is very exciting for all of you, and we are all anxious to see what Miss Monroe has cooked up for us this evening. So Chairwoman Snodgrass, I'm gonna let you and the council take your seats Take your seats. Take your seats and introduce our audience to Miss Clarissa Valentine performing It's Not About Me.
Wow, what a talented gal. And next up will be the Tri-County Mixed Glee Club, formed of singers selected from a number of high schools in Amelia, Dinwiddie, and Nottoway counties. And while their risers are being set up, we're going to chat for just a minute with one of the Glee Club singers, Eddie Wright. Eddie, you're in the sixth grade, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And this is your first year in the Glee Club, which is made of both middle and high school singers? Yes. There are about 170 of us all together. Wow, okay, well I can see your group is about ready to begin. So you go run and take your place. And Mr. Wright, I'll let you tell our audience about an exciting opportunity on the horizon for the Glee Club. Well, the Glee Club, the dance team, and the high school band have all been asked to perform at the Governor's Mansion for the New Year's Day celebration. So your family's triply excited because your daughter Judy's on the dance team and your oldest plays in the band? Judy's the captain of the dance team and Dennis plays first chair trumpet. And since I'll be covering that event for Channel 6, I look forward to seeing you and your family there. But now, without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Tri-County Mixed Glee Club and Dance Team.
Okay, everybody knows how to swim. It's real easy. Put some arm into it. Come on. There you go. You're catching on now. Come on. All right, guys, let's do it one more time. Put some more arm into it. There you go. All right, guys, let's twist. Come on. Show me. There you go. Come on. Get into it. There you go. Now you're moving. I see y'all dancing back there. I don't think y'all are ready for this. We're about to do the mashed potato again. Can y'all do the mashed potato? Show me. Come on. Can y'all really do the twist? Come on, let's go. There you go. Come on, let's do that again. There you go, guys. Y'all are a great audience. Well, while the brothers are coming and getting in their places, tell us all what you'll be performing for us. Yes, I'm telling you, you ain't never seen nothing like this before. These are brothers. They love to sing the beautiful hymns of the faith. Matter of fact, I got for you some good news tonight. They're going to sing their favorite hymn, the Hallelujah Chorus. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. Go on. Well, Miss Crankalite, these brothers, they have taken the vow of a silence. Uh, Father Lasagna Guido, if they can't speak. Not to worry, I think we got this all figured out. Sit back, be amazed. Maestro, por favor, con gusto, gan loco.
Mr. Freeman and Ms. Rod are joining me now to give us their perspectives on the changes taking place in Bethlehem this holiday season. Mr. Freeman? Wow, you're a lot taller than you look on TV. Uh, Ms. Cronkite, I, for one, am pleased at the direction that Bethlehem is taking towards a more inclusive holiday celebration. And with the caliber of entertainment that we're seeing here... Tonight, Which is all local talent, I understand. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, and so I believe Bethlehem is on its way to establishing a popular new holiday tradition. Speaking of local talent, we have a lot of proud parents and grandparents here with us this evening. I have one of those proud grandmas with me now. Miss Rudd, you have granddaughters in the show? Why, yes. My granddaughter, Lily, is the second L from the right in the jingle number. And my older granddaughter, Sissy, is tapping. And they both take lessons from Miss Roxy Monroe. That's right. They've been at Twinkle Toes almost two years. We used to tease Sissy that she was born with two left feet. <laughs> I tell you, I believe that Roxy Monroe could teach just about anybody to dance. Well, that's what I hear. So we're going to turn our attention back to the stage and keep our eye out for the second elf on the right.
finally. Here we go. Wow. Come on, Thank you, darling. Come get up. Oh, dancers, okay. take what you can and clear the stage. Crew, you might as well strike our beautiful set. Calm down. Listen up. I just got a status alert. Right. Power's out south of here all the way down to the school. The school? I have no clue how long it's going to take to get those folks back up and running. All right, we'll do the best Calm you down. can. Just keep me posted, okay? Listen. Listen. Everybody listen. Now, I know most of you don't have power at your homes at the moment, but the church does. Let me make this right. suggestion. We plan a little after-show celebration over at the church. The kids will be doing their Christmas play, and we'll have refreshments afterwards. You're all welcome to come over and join us. Just pick up your blankets and your chairs and head on over to the churchyard. We'll get started just a little sooner than we had planned. We can be ready to go in five minutes. Excuse me, Pastor. Would you mind if my cameraman filmed the children's play? I only have about 15 minutes of unedited film here to fill up a 30-minute time slot. Wonderful, wonderful. No objection here. Excellent, come on over. Thanks. Everybody, come on. Roger, you don't really think your audience would be interested in, in a children's Thank church you. play. Sometimes you just got to make lemonade out of lemons. I know it's a long come shot, on, but at least it's a shot. Katie, ready to roll. Ladies and gentlemen, given the power outage that interrupted Roxy's Follies, we've made a move up to the Bethlehem Church on the far side of Starlight Court, where we're going to take a peek at the Christmas play the Sunday school children have been preparing. And it looks like they're ready to roll, so children, it's all yours. Across the sky, all the stars, young and old, great and small, excitedly gathered on God's throne room. It was rare indeed for only matters of great importance that God called a stellar assembly. What the stars wondered, could the news possibly be? A long blast from hailed angels' trumpets <laughs> cut their wondering short, and a holy hush fell over the heavens as God appeared in his splendor and majesty and seated himself upon the throne. Now all of heaven knew that God loved the people on earth, even though their disobedience and sin caused them great sadness. They knew that God planned very soon to send his own son to live among them and show them how to live. God also revealed his plan to the prophets, to the people on earth who loved him, so they too would be watching and waiting for God's son to appear. Imagine the excitement among the stars as God's plan would get on the way this very night. My beautiful shining stars. The time has come for my son to go to earth. His mother Mary and her husband Joseph have begun their journey to Bethlehem. One of you will play a very crucial role in the events soon come to pass. God went on to explain that there were certain people on earth he wanted to visit Jesus when he was born. In particular, some wise men traveling east and some shepherds looking over their sheep on a hillside nearby. God had decided to use the light of a single star to guide them to the stable. What a perfect plan, the stars thought. But which star was worthy of such an honor? It was then that, one by one, the stars began to boast to God he should be chosen for the task. 
Being circumpolar to the North Celestial Pole, sailors and travelers use my light to find their way when they are lost. By virtue of my experience, I Polaris am the logical choice. in silence, unnoticed by all except its creator. And what of you, Twinkle? Come near and tell me why you have nothing to say. Lord, you know I'm oh so small. My light, it barely shines at all. Surely someone's brighter light would do. Shining through, I 
will shine wherever you want me to. My precious little star, by humility and purity of praise, you will be called the star of Bethlehem. She, who has sought no honor for herself, will shine brighter than any star that has or ever will again. And when her time of glory is finished, and she returns to her place in the heavens, she will still shine bright, lighting the hearts of those who seek him in the stable of Bethlehem. And now, the not so little star bears high into the skies above Bethlehem, sending star beams of worship down upon the baby Jesus, and leading shepherds and wise men to the baby king. Please lead us in singing a little town of Bethlehem. here in Starlight Court with the intention of highlighting the debut of a cutting-edge Christmas production. Circumstances beyond our control intervened, and perhaps not by coincidence, because what we saw through the eyes of these children tonight may be exactly what we all needed to see. This is Katie Cronkite from Starlight Court in Bethlehem, Virginia, wishing you a Merry Christmas. Okay, fellas, that's a wrap. Let's pack it up. Oh, Great children, job, what a wonderful job. I am go, so kids. proud of you. Pastor Paul, can you take Here things from it. here? I can do. Oh, okay, well, children, we're going to walk in our lines back into the church and into the classroom. Well, it's back into parents the and families, don't classes. forget, there's a reception so plan in the fellowship hall to back up a church. Miss Froxy, you and your dancers are welcome to come. I believe we'll take you up on that, Pastor. Doris, honey, I'm going to go and see if I can figure out what's going on with this power and see if I get the power back on. Okay. Be careful. I will. We're going on in, Dad. You coming? Well, I'll be along in a minute. You go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Walter, have you seen your father? No, not since lunch. Mom, our friends are going to the reception. Can we go? Walter? Yeah, you go ahead. I've got too much to do at home. We won't be long. Have you seen Stacy? No, not since we left the house. Where she could be. Hey, thanks. You found my glasses. Oh, you did a great job, little lady. How'd it feel to be the star? You missed the whole point, mister. Okay. The star of our show was baby Jesus. He's the real light of the world. The star's job was just to lead the way so folks could find him, like the shepherds and the wise men, and they got lost and confused, you know? <laughs> How did you find your glasses? This nice man found them. This nice man is Mr. Wright. Uh, you met him before, but it's been a while. Yeah, that's some daughter you've got there, Willie. I know you must be very proud in more ways than one. Oh, yeah. She's a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw Betty and the kids inside. Are you going to join us? Oh, yeah, I'll be in in a minute. Great. Come on, honey. Oh, Merry yes. Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. So proud of you. It's so Hey, good. Willie, have you got a minute? Uh, sure. I'm going to tell Mom I'll be just a few minutes. She's in line. Okay, honey? All right, Arch. Oh, I've never seen you like this. What's up? 
You know, talking to your daughter and watching the kids here tonight just made me feel things I haven't felt in so long. What are you talking about? You know, wonder, amazement. You know, amazement that God would come to earth as an infant. You know, amazement that the king of the universe would be born in a barn but sleep in a feeding trough. Amazement that angels would sing to shepherds and kings would follow a star. You know, I've often wondered what it would have been like, you know, in my imagination, to have been there. And you mentioned the shepherds, right? I would have loved to have stepped into their shoes. Sandals. (laughs) You know, be out on the hillside taking care of my sheep like I'd been doing for dozens of years, maybe nodding off and on, when suddenly... The sky is filled with angels, and they're singing. And they're singing to me. They're singing to us, you know. And they're telling us that the child has been born, the Son of God. And they send us off to find him. (laughs) How do you know you'll find the right kid? (laughs) Well, the angel said, you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger The king of the universe, in a barn, in a feeding trough. I mean, it had to be so confusing, Arch. Are you sure you know where you're going? No, but look, the star, it stopped just over that stable. A stable? Yeah, remember what the angels told us? You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and... Lying in a manger? And chances are, the manger is a a stable. stable. Well, let's go see.
know, the nativity, it's so astounding. Yeah. It's so miraculous. Beautiful. How could I ever lose sight of that? You know, I've been putting the same nativity in my front yard for 15 years. I haven't missed a Christmas Eve communion since Betty and I got married 18 years ago. But year after year, I become more immersed in the decorations, the festivities, even community service projects. You know, until it all just becomes routine. You know, Arch, I believe things are simpler than you might think. You know? First of all, I don't think there's anything wrong with enjoying the festivities that are now a part of Christmas. But you know, the celebration just becomes this lukewarm tradition. You know, even if you celebrate the fact that Jesus was born, if you lose sight of the reason he was born. Well, to point the way to God. Yeah. And, you know, I think the miracle of Christmas, my opinion, yeah. is not what happened just that one night, as incredible as that one night was. I think the bigger miracle is the power of that story to reach across time and still point people to God. Yeah. You know, now that's amazing. And that's how you and I became believers. Yeah. Now that we're believers, we're like that star. We point people to Jesus. And we do that by the way that we live our lives, but mostly by the way that we love others, even those who are difficult to love. I'm afraid I haven't done a very good job of that. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, I'm pretty quick to throw a few bucks in the offering plate for missions to reach around the world, but yeah. what have I done to reach the man literally across my front yard? You know, besides toss around a little Christian ease and a lot of judgment. You know, if I were Walter, I don't think I'd put much stock in anything I had to say. Anyone can go astray. You take a turn and lose your way. Sometimes it's too dark to see the path ahead. God, I feel I've wandered far. Don't even know where you are. I just need to find the place where I can see. Just lead the way. We need to follow you. I'm lost. All that I was looking for. Send a star to, to guide, guide the way. way through the dark, dark of night to light of day. Clear the path and lead. At every turn, confusing signs. How am I supposed to know the way to go? I thought my path was straight and true, but how'd I get so far from you? I've just got to find the place where I can see your face. Just lead the way.
I just came up to walk Lillian home. Well, you should go in and get some dessert. Betty made a cheesecake. Ah, no thanks. I think I'll just stay out here. Uh, you know, Walter, Archie... Uh, go well, you ahead. Go you, you go ahead. I owe you an apology. An apology? Yeah, I've been a lousy neighbor. I've treated you badly, your family badly. And I called the wrong play. I was more interested in winning a game than being a good friend. You know, Walter, well, you've been running to the left. I've just been sliding downhill. You know, as much as I'd love to, Archie, I can't let you take all the blame for this one. I have been so consumed with, with trying to make any contradictory point that I think I've overlooked some obvious truths just despite the messenger. You know, down in my gut, I know something's missing. Not just from Christmas, but from my whole logical little corner of the world. You know, Archie, I want to have what I saw in the faces of those children tonight. I want to have something to believe in. And and I want to know the truth, even if it's not what I expected it would be. You know, it's not hard for us to find the truth, Walter, but it's hard not to run away from it or turn our back on it once we find it. Apology accepted. <laughs> I don't know how you get your cheesecake to turn out like There's that. There's an idea. It always sticks to the pan. Well, I used to have that problem Shut until Mother got to be panless. Archie. We were just talking. Dad, Mr. Freeman, Stacy and I would like to talk to the two of you. Kids, the new Mrs. Freeman and I have something to tell Mother. you. Mother! Okay. Now this is going to be interesting. Now, now, Archie, I know how you feel about the Freemans, but this silly feud has just got to come to an end. Lord, I agree. And, and no matter what you say, what did you say? I said I agree. It's time this feud should end. <clears throat> He's exactly right. I, I know I put a new battery in this thing. I'm sorry. Mom. Mom. <clears throat> I have something to tell you. Clarissa, why are you dressed like that? I'm going on the road. I don't want to be a star. I want adventure. Clarissa, are you trying to kill me? No. It is too dangerous on the road for a woman all alone. It's dangerous, baby. Don't worry, Stella. She won't be alone. She'll be riding with me. <laughs> I can see it now. Beautiful young starlet, grizzled old woman, burst forth from their tiny little cocoon of a town and take to the high road in search of adventure. Or maybe starlet's mother, fearing for the danger of her only daughter. And her elderly friend sells her lucrative bowling alley business to ride alongside, shielding them from the dangers of the open road. That's even better. It'll be a classic. Yes! <laughs> Roger. What about me? What about her? I have a more long-term starring role for you in mind, oh. Roxy. Oh. Mrs. Oh. Roger B. DeMille. Roger, that's the only role I ever really wanted anyway. Well, well, looks like someone may be needing my services. <laughs> and it looks like the Christmas spirit has been hard at work. You know, the cast and I, we knew how all these stories were going to end. But you know, 
We're wondering about your stories. Did you identify with anybody here? What about Walter? Looking for the truth. Wanting something to believe in. You know? What about Archie? You know, settling into a mediocre religious tradition and routine. Somewhere in between. The star over the stable in Bethlehem still points the way to God and his enormous love for us. He loves us so much. We've invited him into our lives, and now he is shining through our lives to you. And that's why we shared the message tonight, because God loves you. And we hope that shines through. You know that shining through part? I'm going to have Pastor Albright, my friends here, tell you a little bit more about that. Watch this. Watch this. Hey, hey, what do you say, gang? Lights came back on. Way to go, Bepco. Yeah. Hey, guys, let's let's, let's send them away with one more song. How about that? (laughs) Hey. Let your light shine. That old base up there. Oh, let your light so shine, and all may see that newborn king. Come, come to the celebration, praise him with all, all of your might. Just open up your light, and let him shine. So just put aside your striving and your small petty pursuits and ask the Lord to live and shine through you. Oh, he will shine all through in all that you say and do. Let your light so shine that all we see. Though the dark would put it out, but don't Take a look around. 
Thanks for coming to be a part of this Christmas celebration with us. My name is Bob Laughlin. I'm the director of the Music and Fine Arts Ministry here. Thank you for spending this time with us and listening to our story again this year. We'll be right back at it next year. Hope you'll come back and see us again. The whole idea of our cast and crew here is to let our light shine. That's what we want to do. You ask why, that's why. We want to take what we have. We're a family here, family ministry, and we'd love to share with you here in our Richmond community. So thank you again for making us part of your holiday calendar and being a part of glorious Christmas nights, Starlight 65. We'd like to end uh, this final presentation with something we end every performance with, a song called The Midnight Cry. There's a scripture that says, now are we the sons and daughters of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we will be like him, for we shall see him, the illuminated Christ, the light of the world, just as he is. As we close out this chapter of another glorious Christmas night's run for us, this was our 18th performance. While we, we kind of work real hard and it blows by real fast, just like preparing for a football game, all of you. Uh, athletes out there, you know, you work real hard in practice and all of a sudden the fun part is actually performing. And as we close uh, all of this this year, uh, we want you to know that uh, we will give everything that we've got every time we get together. As a matter of fact, on Christmas Day we have a broadcast on CBS from 9 until 11 o'clock Christmas morning of last year's production of a storybook Christmas. I hope you'll tune in to that. Let some other folks know and just let your light shine in that kind of way. Could I just close with you in a Christmas prayer? Let's pray together. Lord, you are the light of the world. And that's the Christmas story for us. You came to us as a baby to show us the way out of darkness into your wonderful light. So we're not going to hide it under a bushel this holiday season. We are going to let the light of your love so shine in us. In your name we pray. Amen. Now the midnight cry. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. Midnight cry will be going home. I look around and I see prophecies fulfilled. The signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere. I can almost see the Father as he says, son, go get the children. The midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call God's children. 
the dead in Christ will rise to meet him in the air and then those that remain And at the midnight cry We'll be going home I look around me And I see prophecies fulfilled Every day The signs of the time They are appearing everywhere I can almost see the Father As he says, son, go get the children The bride of Christ will rise Oh, when Jesus steps out On a cloud to call his children The dead in Christ will Yeah.